Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Uh, we're gonna get after kind of a special box next. Um, I've been looking for a reason to, to get to that box sled that I built. Um, and unfortunately, uh, my wife's uncle passed away. So a memorial urn is uh, what's, in, what's on the docket uh, for this video. It's gonna be a fairly quick video. Uh, especially coming straight off of that massive bed build. I was I was ready for a quicker video. So uh, I've uh, pre-milled up a piece of babinga. I've got it to about five eighths in thickness. Um, and I already cut the slot in the bottom to fit a quarter inch bottom panel. Uh, it'll get wangy feet and a wangy lid. Um, but next up, we're going to head over to that sled and start getting our our miters in here and making a box. Okay, so over at the chops, I actually cut these pieces into what I believe are same length strips. Uh, but just in case, I went ahead and set up a stop block for the first cut, and then I'll readjust that stop block to get the second cut, and that will ensure that each part is exactly the same length. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm set up for the little short sides. So I'm going to go ahead and make that first cut and then I'm going to make the same cut on the other short side and then I'll readjust the stop block and get the other side. So I'm just going to tape these up for a dry fit so that I can measure for that bottom. And now I can get a measurement from the, for the uh, bottom. And we're grain matched all the way around except for this one back corner where they come together. Uh, but that will be in the back. So now with the bottom all set up, we're just going to go ahead and glue this up. Uh, these joints came out great right off the saw. I'm super happy uh, with how that sled functioned. But there. Okay, so while the box glues up, I'm going to prepare for the feet I'm gonna put on this. Um, I had some nice leftover wangi from the last project, um, and I'm gonna cut these into inch and a half squares. Uh, so they'll just be small feet on the bottom, kind of like that. Uh, but I want to chamfer on them. And I'm gonna to go to the router table and chamfer one side uh, so that I have one side showing all the time. And it gives me a line to work to to get the other sides, but it can't be chamfered under the box. This will make more sense uh, when you see it. Um, so let me go chamfer one side and then cut these into inch and a half chunks and I'll show you what we're doing. So 
I hope this is showing up well. But I have the chamfer that I just did at the router table right here. And I need to do the short side now. Now for me, this is just too dangerous at the router table, this little tiny part. So I'm going to do it by hand. Uh, I'm just going to scribe a line on there and use a little rasp and some sanding and get that, get that chamfer on. And then that will locate these four feet. Okay, so I changed my mind a little bit on how I'm going to do this. I'm going to use my disc sander for this. I, I could do it with hand tools. It would just be take a lot longer. Um, but I marked the line back to give me something to work to. And I carried my lines over on the ends so I can see where I need to go. And I'm just going to put that chamfer on there and then uh, do a little hand sanding. So off camera I went ahead and, and cut a piece of uh, wangi to the size that I want for the top and all I'm going to do now is go ahead and chamfer all four sides uh, to match those feet. I might step up just a little bit just to give it a little different profile, um, but not much, not that much. So I like the way that this looks, um, but it just, it doesn't have quite enough depth for me. So off camera, I went ahead and cut a second one, just a little bit smaller, that fits inside the first one, and I can stack those together. And then I just made a, a small knob for the top, um, and I'm not sold on that yet either. Uh, as well, I cut the inner box um, that I am I know that goes in. Um, so while we're still waiting for this box to glue up, I'm going to go ahead and glue this inner on here to fit the, fit the box. And then we're going to let this sit for a while. So with the box out of clamps, I've set up a stop block uh, so that I stay consistent all the way around. But I'm going to do two smaller ones uh, on the top and the bottom. And I'll just flip these this way and use the same stop block setup. And then I will center and make a little deeper one in the middle. So there'll be three splines on each side. Okay, and I prepared my shim stock or my spline stock uh, in the drum sander to fit snugly in each one of these. So I'm just going to go ahead and get those glued in. So once all the splines are uh, glued up, I used a flush trim saw to trim them. And now I'm just going to sand and I'm going to sand this box all the way up to 180 at this point. So with all the splines in, I can actually start gluing on these little feet where they go. Um, I'm going to glue these on one at a time, and I'm actually going to leave you know 20 or 30 minutes or so in between each one just to get kind of set uh, before I come and, and put the next one on. Uh, but that's what's up next is just to get these feet on, um, and I will probably also go ahead and glue, center and glue this little handle to the top of the lid. All right, so there's the box. It's all sanded up to about 180. All the seams are good. The feet are good. Uh, I'm happy with everything. The lid works really well. Um, so all I'm going to do now is 
throw it on this cart behind me and I'm going to hit it with a little bit of spray lacquer uh, and call this one done. Okay guys, well there it is, uh, a nice finished urn. Um, not difficult to produce, that sled really makes things go super nice and easy for this where you can concentrate on some of the fun details and stuff instead of getting perfect mitered corners, right? So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the project and uh, until next time guys, take care.